Listening to God's Word is an essential tool for your spiritual growth. We bring to you the simple but highly anointed message that guarantees absolute liberation from all oppressions of the devil and powerful impartation for all round lifting in life. Take a leap into a divine encounter as the anointed man of God takes you into an adventure of a lifetime. God bless you as you listen. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. The theme of this month has been read in the course of the week says God's plan for me is in his book. God's plan for me is in his book. And the anchor scripture is from the book of Isaiah chapter 29 verses 11 and 12. God's plan for me and you is in his book. And the vision of all is becoming unto you as the words of the book that is sealed. Which men deliver to one that is lying, saying, read this. I pray thee, because that is where your destiny lies. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not lying, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not lying. And until the book is read, and until the book is open, weeping continue. A book was delivered from heaven, and no man could open it. But Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, came and opened the book. And when he opened the book, the weeping ended. In any area of your life where you have been weeping before now, an end has come in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our teaching series in our Sunday services for the month of March 2018 is captioned, Assessing God's plan for your life from his book. Assessing God's plan for your life from his book. God's plan for you is in his book every time you bought you know perhaps you just buy a an electronics we open the carton you see a paper there they call it manufacturer manual the god of heaven who created you and i after creating us he placed on each one of us the creator's manual which is the bible you are the buyer, but you cannot understand the product you have bought without reading the manual. Until the book is open, weeping continue. Stop giving excuses. What excuse does is to exclude you. It excludes your destiny. Open the book and read. I pray that this month, God's plan for you shall be fulfilled. This month, God's purpose for creating you here shall not be truncated. God's agenda for bringing you to this line shall never be turned down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What is in the Bible? What is the Bible itself? What does it contain? What are it contains? Five major things. Number one. The Bible is the custodians of God's vision for every child of God. It's the custodians of God's vision for every child of God. God says, read this book. For there is your life and your destiny. Life is so fragile that it doesn't have duplicates. When a man wastes this precious life, they don't sell it in the market. 
the word of god the bible is the custodians of god's vision for every child of god isaiah chapter 29 verses 11 to 12. what is the content of the bible number two the word of god which is the bible is the divine mirror that reveal our true picture of our future divine mirror that reveal our true picture of our future in christ whosoever look into the perfect law of liberty james chapter 1 and verse 25 and continue therein. He be not a forgetful era, but the doer of the work, that this man shall be blessed in his deed. Your blessing is in the book. Your blessing is in the book. Verse 23 says, For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholding himself and going away and straight away forgetting the man of man of man he was. But who so look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein is not a forgetful era, but the doer of the work. He said, This man, this woman shall be blessed in all his days. So the word is the divine mirror that reveals our true picture of our future. You can never discover your future outside of the scripture. The scripture or the future of every child of God. The scripture. What is the content of the world? Number three. The Bible is the creator's manual that shows you who you are, what you are what, and what you can do. You never discover yourself outside of this world. You never. No product can discover itself outside of manufacturer manual. The word of God, which is the Bible, is the creator's manual that shows you who you are, what you are, what, and what you can do. You never discover your potential until you open the book. In Psalm 100, verse 3, David said, Know ye that the Lord God is, is God, it is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. Somebody made you. You can't know better than the one that made you. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So, the creature manual shows to you who you are. What you are what and what you can do. Number four. What is the content of the Bible? It is the prophetic agenda for the redeemed. Prophetic agenda for the redeemed. In Isaiah chapter 34 verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Read. If you don't want to enter red, read. Red connotes danger. Read. Clothes cover your body. Books covers your destiny. Read. Mike Mudok said, if at the age of 40 you want to truly prosper, you must have 40 books that talk about prosperity. Amen. Many don't have one and they are praying for prosperity. You will stay long there in poverty. Two things determine your life in life, in life, in this very life. The book you read and the association you keep. Read that publication very well. It's for you. The Bible is God's prophetic agenda for the redeemed. Yeah, people of God. Somebody may be born again, but is living in ignorance because he won't read, he will still suffer. He may enter heaven for being born again, but he will suffer here. There is a person of Jesus that takes you to heaven, and there is a principles of Jesus. Jesus was an addicted reader at age 12. He always sit in the temple. 
listening and reading. He was a lay reader. When the pastor quotes a scripture, he will be the one to stand to read it. We have many lay readers in Anglican and Catholic today. If you don't know what they call lay reader, praise the Lord. He was an addicted reader. He knew what was written. So after he has prayed and fasted and Satan came to tempt him, he knew the answer. Thou shalt not bow down for any graven image. It is written. If he has not been re no reading, he wouldn't know what is written. And if you don't know what is written, your destiny can be written off. Please read. Read. It is a prophetic agenda for the redeemed. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 24 says, The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall I shall it come to pass, and as I have proposed, so shall it be. And blessed is she that believeth. Luke 145, For there shall be performance of those things which were told of her from the Lord. Blessed is she that believeth. So God's word is a prophetic agenda for you and I. And number five, what does it contain? What is the content of the Bible? The Bible, very interesting, is the satisfied guide of destiny. Satisfied guide of destiny. You never discover your bearing in life outside of God's world. For there is a way that seems right to a man. The end of that way are the ways of, God, of, of, of evil. A way seems right, seems good, but the ends of it are evil. You will not walk in that way. The question this morning is, where do I assess God's plan for my life? Where? Where? And the answer is very simple. From his book. From his book book scientist says the only book that gives answer to the question of man is not encyclopedia but the bible it doesn't change it remain forever it is divine in authorship infinite in scope it doesn't change it remain forever Psalm 119 verse 89 Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Where do I discover God's plan for my life? From his book. The Bible is God's book where we discover God's vision for our lives. God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 13 verse 14 and 15 Look from where you are. From the west to the south from the south to the north northward southward eastward and westward for all the land you are able to see i will give it to you what you have not been able to see god is not permitted to give it to you people of god listen to me god said to abraham look from the north northward that is check from Genesis to Malachi. Check from Matthew to Revelation. Whatever you are able to see, that is what I'm going to give to you. I saw from God's word that God's plan for me is of good and not of evil. To give me the expected end. The end that I'm expecting. So God's word is the spiritual mirror that reveals our actual picture in redemption. It reveals our actual picture in redemption. Because as in water, Proverbs 27 verse 19, face answered to face. So the act of man to man. And in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26, the word of God says, that he might sanctify and cleanse you with the washing of water by the wall. Outside of the wall, nothing works. Outside of God's word, nothing works. And Jesus is the word of God personified. And he said in John 15 verse 5, Without me, you can do nothing. He said again, Even I myself 
I cannot do anything as I hear from the Father. That is what I do. So God's word is God himself. He said in the book of John chapter 14 and verse 26, when he shall come, he shall show you things to come. For he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that is what he's going to speak. Holy Spirit can't perform without the word. Jesus can't perform without God. How will a man perform without God? Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that builds it. Except the Lord watch over the city, the watchman away but in vain. In case you have been disconnected from God, please get connected. That is where the solution is. Get connected to God again. The Bible is the book of vision. If God's plan for you must be unveiled and fulfilled, you need three mentalities to carry. And what are the mentalities to carry for God's plan for your life to be fulfilled? Three of them. Number one, carry a mentality of dominion. You are not a non-entity. You are created to dominate. Somebody may be born again, but without carrying the mentality of aboveness, you may remain below. Carry a mentality of dominion because you are born to dominate. You are redeemed to walk in dominion. Here where Jesus places you. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. He has raised us up together and made us sit together. Where? In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Please have this mentality. Everyone born of God, we are sharing the same bench with Christ. The Bible says, greater works than this shall you do. Jesus said, if you believe, greater works than this you will do. He raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How seated are you in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 21? He said, You are seated far above principality, far above power, far above dominion, and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. You are seated far. You are born again and you are still recording that in your family they don't get married. You don't carry dominion mentality. You don't carry it. You are born again and Jesus said, you are seated with me. You are sharing benches with me. And you are still thinking that I would like to get married. No. Your dominion mentality is too shallow. Amen. You know what happened yesterday? Sorry, on Friday. Amazement. I met someone in the year 20, 2008. Exactly 10 years ago. Believing God for marriage. And we keep communicating after we have departed since 2008. And on Friday, he said to me in that year, Pastor, one day my card will come out and I will locate wherever you are to bring the card for you. On Friday, the card came. After 10 years, God may seem to be denied, but you never deny somebody. He all the way from Uyo in Akwaibom State. All the way brought the card for me. Will I attend? No. But I release the fatherly blessing upon, upon that person. I stand upon this exalted altar. Everyone that are, you know, that are overripe for marriage, very, very shortly, the same God who said to this person, we said to you supernaturally. <laughs> Your season of delay has come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Please carry dominion mentality. Other may not be getting married in your family, but not you. Why? Because you are seated with Christ. Could you imagine Jesus being a woman and be looking for a husband? Could you imagine Jesus wanted to get married and everybody will marry him? 
everybody 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 please change your mentality you don't belong to that family again you now belong to the family of christ you see in my family my elder sister didn't get married the one that follow is a man that one didn't get married the one that follow i'm the top fourth on the line you see i didn't get married what concerns you with your family allow god to set you first if you are standing in the gap if god has said to you stand in the gap for that person you shall know the truth and the truth you know shall make you free nothing made free like the knowledge of the truth please apply this truth carry dominion mentality stop walking like a pitiable person many ladies are so carried away with when will i get married to the point when they are going out they wear clothes out or upside down are so deep because the mentality is corrupted they could not even package themselves very very well again on the altar of who will marry me comparing themselves with themselves they are not wise listening to your mocker will make you miss your maker why can't you focus on your creator the one that somebody gave back to you you must give back to somebody every eligible single under the sun of God, i decree over you before the close of this year your marriage card is out in the name of jesus Amen. carry dominion mentality that is the first mentality you need number two mentality you must carry carry a mentality of a king and a queen you are not a non-entity you are not a byword you are not just a proverb carry a mentality of a king and a queen even though Esther generation was slave they were slave Esther carry a queen mentality. she doesn't dress anyhow she doesn't behave anyhow she doesn't she shouldn't talk anyhow she carry herself well she behave herself to the point that when they were looking for who to marry the king they located esther you think a brother will marry an entity a brother will marry the one that is not dressing well i'm not talking about extravagant dressing but dress decently present yourself decently greet people in a modest manner relate with people stop being isolated isolation is the next step to suicide stop that there is nothing happening to you that is not happening to somebody. Many will cry and cry and choke their pillow with tears and their heart is not looking good again. On the platform, who will marry me? An end has come to your tears. An end has come to your tears. An end has come to your tears. You are a king and a queen. Genesis chapter 17, verse 5 to 7. Neither shall thy name be more called Abraham, but thy name shall be abraham for a father of many nations have made thee and i will make thee exceedingly fruitful and i will make nation of thee and kings kings shall come out of thee and i will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed and after thee in your generation for everlasting covenant to be a god unto thee and to thy seed after thee so you are not ordinary person you are a queen and a king in the book of galatians chapter 3 verse 29 and if you be christ then you are, are ye abraham's seed and heir according to the promise revelation chapter 5 verse 10 and god has made us revelation 5 10 unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on this earth never compare yourself with people that are not going anywhere you are a child of god you are a king and you are a priest change your mentality yesterday one of our pastors that took uh, saturday wsf outline said your mentality determines your actuality the way you think is the way you become 
Because as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Your life can never be transformed outside of what you are thinking. If failure is what you are thinking, don't expect success. It is as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. So carry the mentality of a king. What else? Number three, mentality you must carry. You must carry a mentality of a blessed child of God. I love this. Blessed child of God. You are redeemed. You are born again to be a blessing, not a body to your world. Carry a mentality of a blessed child of God. When I have one coat, I used to be like a king. Jumping here and there. Somebody dashed me one old briefcase. When I carry the briefcase and my black coat and my black trousers and, and shoe that has opened. Somebody look at me and they said, the way you dress, they won't help you. I said, I don't need the help of man. Until tomorrow, I don't need the help of man because fame is the help of man. Stop dressing for people to pity you. Stop dressing for who is checking me, who is looking at me. Somebody is looking at you. As a young girl, you now wear slippers from your house and you are drawing your leg on the floor. Eh? Good morning, oh, hi, exceeding grace. She has even forgotten the year we have. We are in the new era, she's talking exceeding grace. Four years, she's, she's outdated. Praise the Lord. Please understand this. You are a blessed child. Tell me, I am a blessed child. Oh, I am a blessed child. I am a blessed child. Jesus make me a blessed child. I am a blessed. I am not a body. I am a blessed child. Nothing was working in my life. The one I was dating was crying for me. I was not crying for myself because I can see the future. Now hear me. People who have the picture of their future don't cry for now. The reason you are crying now is because you cannot see your husband, you cannot see your wife, you cannot see your glorious destiny. If you can see, you will smile. That is what vision does. It makes you to smile even in the midst of challenges. There was a year I was taking rice and salt for one month. No, no money to buy Maggi. I used firewood to cook that rice. No pay rice. Many of you may not know it. Because you are born when the occupants has come. If you know no pera, you know it's full of stone. I don't need to select the stone. Stone is part of food. Amen. My generation will never eat that rice again. Praise the Lord. Please see yourself. It doesn't matter where you are today. Be able to see where you are going. And you will show. You will surely get there in the name of Jesus. Why my wife to be was crying for me, this boy, how will you make it? I was smiling. Why somebody was pitying me, I was not pitying myself. I dressed well, I jumped well, and, and I celebrated Jesus because I can see my future. The worst that can happen is what is happening today. Tomorrow will be better. And that will be your testimony. That will be your testimony. That will be your testimony. Say me, I am a blessing. I am not a body. Say it angrily. I am a I am not a Say it one more time. I am a blessing. I am not a So stop pitying yourself. Stop pitying yourself. Put on something good. You know, one of my daughter here, I said to her, I said, the, the way you are dressing, even though I'm looking for a wife, I won't marry you. God is my witness. I said, even though I'm looking, I said, I won't marry you. Maybe she's hearing me, I don't know. Amen. <laughs> I said, can you see your head? Not tidy up. You don't need to have money to tidy up your head. Deeper life mentality, they comb it and make it neat. Brush it back, the thing is looking neat. How bad? You not know, scatter, scatter because there is no money. Forget about that. I said, go and do something. God is my witness. I tell you the truth and I lie not. She might be hearing me now. She changed her mentality of being a blessed child she went to somebody and they made a half of a a kind of air for her she located my whatsapp and forwarded it there and came to show it to me in the office that same week said me that same week said me that same week two people approached her if not 
for the sake of some other brother who have called her out now. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. As he came to me, he said, Pastor, I love this one, I don't love this one. But this one is disturbing me. I said, be running away from, her, from him. <laughs> Somebody is under the sound of my voice. Who doesn't have suit on now? But before the close of this man, people will be pursuing you to get you married. In the mighty name of Jesus. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for all for cause is everyone that is hung on the tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham, the blessing that shall become ours in Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So you are not a cursed child, you are a blessed child. You are not a body, you are a blessing. Stop seeing yourself as a body. I'm happy for her. Everywhere she's, she finds herself now, she's just opening it. Open it it. Because somebody is at the corner now. Open it it. Open it it. Someone is here. You are weeping with him. Before the close of this man, you are smiling in the name of Jesus Christ. You are smiling in the name of Jesus Christ. So have a vision of glorious tomorrow. Look at the word of God that guarantee your marital testimony. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the people of God shall possess their possession. For every eligible single under the sound of my voice, this season you are possessing your possession. Amen. Locate the word that guarantees your marital fulfillment. Seek God's guidance from his book. Marriage is a long time journey. Don't rush to it. Those who rush in, we rush out. Without God, the choice may look good today, but it will soon turn to be bad tomorrow. I know what I'm saying. I'm a pastor by the election of grace. Those who rush to marry, they are rushing out today. I had somebody, do you know that man before you get married to him? He said, Pastor, if I may be sincere, I don't know him. If you marry a man you don't know, not knowing him by his name and his character, there will be a problem. The journey to a marital breakthrough, listen to me, begins with God and it ends with God. Psalm 127 verses 1 and 2, except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that builds it. Psalm 127 verses 1 and 2, except the Lord watch over the city, the watchman are way but in vain. Your marriage, hear me, determines everything about your life. If you must succeed in anything, you must first succeed in your marriage. If you must succeed as a pastor, your home determines that. If you must succeed as a manager, your home also determines that. Your home determines what becomes of your life. Many young ladies have a glorious future, but they marry wrongly and their destiny crash. It is better to be delayed, but you cannot be denied. I was the last to get married in my family. Virtually all of them thought that I'm an impotent person because you don't see ladies around me. They arranged for a lady to come and lost, you know, tempt me, but she failed. And today, every one of them learned from my marriage today. They are learning from here today. Someone may be delayed, but you cannot be denied. Settle down. Wait for God's time. God's time is the best. Getting married outside of God's plan puts you in eternal frustration. Now, quickly, if my marital breakthrough must come speedily, what must I do? You know, covenant talks about what you must do because God's part is settled. If I must con be connected to the person God has ordained for me, what must I do? Very simple. Number one, covenant step you must take is the ability in you to see what you want. See what you want. See yourself getting married. See yourself settled with a godly home. Marriage is a miracle and God's miracle is limited to how far you can see See well. You must see your possession before you possess it. 
The miracle you have not received is the miracle you have not seen where God said to, to Jeremiah, Jerry, what can you see? He said, I see an almond tree. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Please see what you want. See yourself getting married. One of the greater things the enemy is using, you know, using against the believer to deprive them of their possession is spiritual blindness. He blinded their eyes from sin. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is it to them that are lost, in whom the gods of this world, the gods of this world, talking about Satan, are blinded the mind of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Until you see your healing, you can't taste it. Until you see your promotion, you can't take part of it. Until you see, you know, giant as ant, you never conquer. See yourself getting married. Ask yourself when. If your answer is this year, tell yourself this year. It is what you see that God will perform. In Isaiah chapter 16 and verse 22, he said, because you have seen it, I will hasten it to perform. I will perform it. I will hasten it in your time. Because you have seen it. Isaiah 60, 22. I will hasten it. Because a little one of you shall become a thousand. And a small one, a nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. It is what you see that God performed. Number two thing you must do is to keep speaking it out who is mocking you notwithstanding keep speaking it, speaking it out keep calling it forth keep calling those things that be not as though they were that is the way God performed that is the way God gets things done he called those things that be not as though they were Romans chapter 4 verse 17 say positive things about yourself Tell them I am getting mad so, so, so dead. Let people hear you. Who is getting angry at me, notwithstanding? This boy will never beg. Who is getting angry, notwithstanding? This boy will never get sick. I've been saying it for years and it, it owes. Please speak bigger than your mouth. Let people mock you so God can make you. Speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out. Tell people when and where. Be sure of what you are saying. Be sure of your conversion. Be sure of your declaration. Call good things to yourself. Stop you know, comparing yourself with people that are not going anywhere. You are a blessed child and you must speak like a blessed child. Number three things to do quickly. Stop looking at your condition. They are covenant steps to your marital testimony. Stop looking at your condition. Ezekiel was asked to see the dry bone in Ezekiel 37, but he kept quiet. He saw the dry bone very dry. Ezekiel 37, verses 1 down to 10. And God said to him, prophesy prophesy to the dry bone he was first asked can this bone lived Ezekiel faith cannot pick it up but he used gimmick answer thou knowest even though every situation around you is telling you this thing will not happen don't speak negative speak good thing to yourself speak good thing to yourself can this bone live? Ezekiel said, thou knowest. I don't know. But you know, it's better to be on the neutral ground than to be on the negative side. And God said to him, prophesy. And he started prophesying. Said to the bone, bone, joint to bone, ligament to ligament, tender to tender. Ezekiel keep prophesying. And when he prophesied, an, an army emerged, but lying down. What Next, and God said to Ezekiel, Prophesy life, command the east wind to enter into it. Go and read it. 
is get at 10 verse 1 to 10. And Ezekiel prophesied the east wind to enter into the army that is that is being lying down, and light came into that army. What God is waiting for many of our eligible single is to speak out. Just speak out. Some men are only waiting for miracle job. Miracle job may not come until you speak out. I'm telling you. I was nobody when I said to my wife, I want to get married to you. Nobody. Living in one room apartment. And when we are celebrating seven years anniversary of marriage, I said, let us thank God. She said, for what? I said, for you. For you. He said, why? I said, you could have been one of the ladies that will be believable for marriage now, if not because you agree to marry me. He said, yeah, yeah, man. I said, you are a yeah, yeah, woman. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. The, my life does not look like it. One room apartment. My salary was 2,000 naira. After I, pray, I paid my tight 200 naira, I have 1,008. When I paid the house rent 200 naira, I have 1,006. And I gathered the money and I bought the first car. You want to know the car? Mazda 323. Direct to Kumbo. I was a big boy in town. It's not about the fatness of your salary. It's about the use of your sense. The use of your sense. If you are taking a million naira per month, if you don't use your sense, you, will, you waste it. You will waste it. From one apartment to the out of Abuja where I was paying 559,000 naira per, per year. Level change. Level change. Brother, open your mouth like a seeker. You have closed your mouth enough. One brother came to me in the station. He said, Pastor, one brother Gabriel. I said, what is the meaning of brother Gabriel? He said, brother Gabriel has gone to propose to the lady that God told me. I said, did you speak to her? Did you speak to that sister when God told you? There are things God has said to you as a brother and you are still keeping quiet. Hear me? There is always a path of destiny. There are men under the sound of my voice that until you speak out to somebody, your destiny never opens up. What are you carrying that somebody have not carried before? Go and speak. My destiny opened up when I spoke to my wife. And we robbed mine together. We built the first house in 2008, debt free. Somebody, people tried to convince her, this boy you don't know, you are giving money together. My destiny opened up. I'm not dependent on my salary today. That's the truth. Many destiny may not open up until you open your mouth. Whatever you talk is what you say. I speak right now to every eligible brother that is qualified to get married. Go and speak in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, it is abomination for a sister to come and meet you. Many of them have received vision concerning you. They come close to you, they greet you well, they shake your hand. You should understand with yourself that something is happening. <laughs> something is happening. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, that is the truth. Hear me? Don't marry unbeliever. If a sister come to you, it's my new don't error, and he shake your hand, and he's asking for your asking for your job and everything, you should know that something is there. You too, go and pray and let God speak to you. Amen. It may look like a joke, but God used joke to break yoke. He uses joke to break you. Everyone under the yoke of marital delay, the yoke is broken this morning. The yoke is broken this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, go and speak. Call for those things that be not as though they were. Stop looking at your condition. Your condition is not your permanent situation. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Luke chapter 12 and verse 2. For they looked unto him and they were lighting and their faces were not ashamed. Never, never look at what people are saying. Don't listen to them. Stop giving heed to your parents that are pressing you. It is normal for parents to oppress you. Tell them God has done it and bring it the man in no time. Stop telling them no man has come. Tell them the man has come and I'm bringing the man in no time. So they will relax themselves. Don't allow your parents to appeal to a wrong person. If not, you will rush out. Many are having broken home today. Fighting today. Fighting tomorrow. Because God has not ordained that person to them. God's time may be delayed, but it's very sure. 
very sure very sure stop looking at your age stop comparing yourself with your mate you have a unique destiny stop comparing yourself cast away every spirit of doubt don't doubt what god has said to you stop you know referring to your family members who are not getting married focus your own life first when god settles you we set to order number four covenant step to take is to fight say it may fight fight don't fold your hand waiting for things to happen fight the word say fight the good fight of faith the fight you are to fight is the fight of faith the fight of faith go ahead as a blessed child sow your wedding gun and keep it fight of faith go ahead and bring your car tentatively fight the fight of faith amen go ahead and begin to announce your wedding day fight a good fight of faith faith don't see the way people see people see negative but faith sees positive people see darkness but faith sees light please fight the good fight of faith in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 the word of God says Ephesians 6 16 above all taking the shield of faith and what do you do with it you will quench all the fiery darts of the enemy including a cause raised upon your generation that you will not get married you will use the few point of faith to quench them including incantation and spell place upon your generation never to get married you use the fight of faith to quench them every diabolical power working against you you use the weapon of faith to fight against them fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life our battle is not physical they are spiritual and i stand upon this exalted altar anyone that said over their dead body would you marry it will be surely over their dead body in the name of jesus christ and lastly you can also engage this covenant step sacrificing your way out of delay sacrificing your way out of delay so into the life of those who are getting married give them something attend their wedding either you are invited or you are not invited you are doing something what will make happen for someone god will make it happen for you first king chapter 3 verse 3 to 5 love is a platform for sacrifice please understand sacrifice is not in time of volume but in time of cost and value give them something somebody cannot be getting married and you sow a seed without god making it happen for you one day relax yourself these are the covenant steps to get this thing done it is not by power nor by might but by my spirit sees the lord but by my spirit sees the lord see yourself getting married gloriously call forth those things that be not as though they were what else disown the mockers don't listen to them don't compare yourself you are a blessed that you cannot end up as a non-entity fight the good fight of faith and sacrifice your way out of delay this is what to do and i want you to know this morning that just the way we have the arms that scattered we also have the carpenter the free that join together i'm here being sent to you by god's servant as one of the carpenters to join together and i decree that in the year 2018 there shall be commotion of marriages in this church look at what the word of god says Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 down to 21 then lifted up my eyes and saw and behold four arms and i said unto the angel that talked with me what be this and he answered me these are the arms which have scattered judah and israel and jerusalem 
is scatter your appointed helpers. He scatter your God or Gideon husband and spouse. And the Lord show me four carpenters. Four arms, four carpenters. Four arms, four carpenters. And the Lord show me four carpenters. Then said I, verse 21, what are these carpenters come to do? And he spake saying, these are the all which has scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head. But these carpenters are come to fray them, to cast out their own of the Gentiles, which lifted up their own over the land of Judah to scatter it. Therefore, whatever has scattered you and your appointed spouse, I command divine connectivity in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever I block the eyes of your God or then husband, God or then wife from locating you, I command those way to be rolled away in the name of Jesus Christ. Say with me, I am a blessed guy. I am not a body. I am destined for glorious things. My future is bright and I must get there. Rise to your feet this morning and claim your own portion. Go ahead and claim your own portion. Lord, I receive my portion of miracle, my portion of testimony, my portion of settlement, my portion of miracle marriage. Perhaps you have somebody you can stand in the gap for. Go ahead and stand in the gap for that person right now. Go ahead and stand in the gap for that person. I pray, Lord Jesus, stand in the gap for every eligible single. This is their season. This is their decision. This is their season. This is their season. This is their season. Lord, via the book, let our eyes be open. Connect us to our appointed partner. Connect us to our appointed partner. Destroy every evil of negative character that have separated us with our appointed partner. Lord, visit us by your mighty power. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Surely they shall gather. But my God say, I will scatter them. Every evil gang up against your marital settlement is hereby scattered in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever any man born of woman may be doing against your marriage, hindering and causing delay, it is hereby over today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that we talk about is the armor. It has the power to break the cedar. It has the power to penetrate into any situation of life. I stand upon this exalted altar, lifting up the armor of heaven. And I decree because the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edges word, is able to penetrate into any situation of life. Therefore, whatever may be responsible for the delay and disappointment of your marital settlement they are hereby broken in the name of jesus christ i stand upon this altar the same god that settled this fellow and he came to present his wedding card everyone who believed these sons of the prophet before the close of the year 2018 your marital testimony is hereby settled in the name of Jesus. Whatever God has not planted in your life that is causing delay, I command them to be uprooted in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have your contact item, please, please them out. If you have your contact item for your marriage, bring them out. And I decree over those contact items that very, very shortly, it will turn to you for a testimony. Amen. I speak as one of the sons of the prophet of this commission. The commission that is committed to liberating mankind. Whatever siege of the enemy that have bowed your head down from getting connected to your appointed helper, the siege is hereby broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. I stand upon this altar and I prophesy over your life. This year shall be your year of decoration. This year shall be your year of beautification. No more delay for you in the name of Jesus. 
Every yoke of negative character is hereby broken. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. Those contact items in your hand shall become a reality of your glorious wedding. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No more delay. No more disappointment. No more delay. No more disappointment. No more delay. No more disappointment. The siege is over today. The siege is over today. Hear me? Favor is the fighter key to securing your marital breakthrough. Favor. He that finded a, a wife, finded a good thing, and he obtained favor of the Lord. I decree over every eligible single, particularly those who have been faithful, that this year you shall be faithful with godly marriage in the name of Jesus Christ. For every widow and widowers under the sound of my voice who desire to remarry, the God of second chance will connect you to your appointed spouse in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your season of isolation is here by Hover. Your season of loneliness is here by Hover. Welcome to your season of celebration. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Just before we conclude this morning, there are people here who need to get connected to their first ordained husband in the person of Jesus. You need him more than ever you need any other person. You need to get connected to him. You are here, you know you are not connected or sometimes ago you are connected and you get yourself disconnected again. You need Jesus more than ever before. You know you have tried everything you know to do, nothing is working. You need the help of God. You need Jesus more than ever before. He wants to give you rest. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you joy. He wants to end your struggle. He wants to connect you to your appointed helper. I want to quickly pray with you this morning. You belong to that group. In your standing position, lift your right hand to Jesus. On head bow in honor of Jesus, lift your right hand to Jesus. Lift it up very well if you are lifting it up. Lift your right hand to Jesus and say this prayer after me. Repeat this prayer after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am sorry. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. I confess with my mouth that you died for me. On the third day, you rose again for my salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now I know I am born again. My name is written in the book of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Someone pray that prayer.